Thank you, family. Welcome once more again on this Christmas Day. And welcome everybody all over the world here on our YouTube channel as we celebrate the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. I am so excited for what the Lord is busy doing in our lives. This is a miracle that took place two, more than 2,000 years ago. And we are still amazed and the love that God has really shared for us. So we are so thankful that you can join us today. And may you be blessed as we go into God's word. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you that we can be in the moment where we celebrate who you are in us. A unifier of our lives with our God. Our peacemaker. We thank you, Father, that we can be found on your side. And as we celebrate this day, we remember, Lord, all who are going through tough times, those, Lord, who are homeless, those who are not with their families, and those, Father, that are going through tough times due to this COVID-19. We pray your peace over each and everybody, that it may the hand of the Lord be upon them. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord. Here is a word as it's about to be read. And please speak to us through it in a special way. We honor you and we give glory to your mighty name. We thank the Lord that in 2020, we can still hear his word during this moment of Christmas time. It's a time 
of celebration. It's time where we, we come together as families, spiritually or biologically. We come together and celebrate the goodness of the Lord in our lives. And today's message is Bethlehem House of Bread. And we read from the book of Luke chapter 2 verse 4 and it reads thus. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David. And because he belonged to the house and the line of David. It was a time of census. And so Joseph too, as one of the residents of Bethlehem, had to go back home for the census that was done during that time. And Bethlehem is one of the smallest towns found near Jerusalem. It was at Bethlehem where many eyes first, men's eyes began or first saw God in the flesh, in the form of birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. One wonders why Bethlehem and not one of the fine places that were available at that time, that our Lord can be born in such a place, Bethlehem, which easily translated a house of bread. It was the home of Joseph and Mary. It is the city of David. That's where their ancestors were. And now when you read verse 15 on, on Luke 2, it says, let us, that this are, 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 are the wise men, after they marveled at the message and the signs that they saw of a child that will be born and whose name will be Emmanuel. They say, let us go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which is come to pass which the Lord has made known unto us. They marveled at this birth of this child, and they couldn't wait to reach and bring presents to that child. And it is at the Bethlehem, at the house of bread, where Christ was born. He was born in that town that is so insignificant in terms of, of the standard of the world in his time. When you look at other towns or find places that were around during his time. And Jesus was not born in a house of royalty. Nor the house of riches. Nor a house of celebrities. He was not even born in Athens. Or Jerusalem for that matter. Or Rome. Or at one of the cities that you can think of which could be one of the fleshy cities that one could like to be. And he was not born in any cultural or educational or political uh, or society that or one of the significant excluding society that we always find in the places where we live in. But he was born in Bethlehem. And Mika, when he speaks... Of the insignificancy of the world, uh, especially focusing on Bethlehem. When you read Micah 5 2, he says, But, but you, O Bethlehem Ephrata, are only a small village in Judah, yet a ruler of Israel will come from you, and whose origins are from the distant past or everlasting. O oh, you, O oh, little Bethlehem, are only just a small fraction of one of the towns that are found in Jerusalem. But out of that city, out of that insignificancy, that is where God is bringing his plan of our salvation. In that very distant land, that is where Bethlehem, the house of bread, is now, when you look at the bread, it is one of the food items that is easily accessible. Bread is one of life's most common things that you can find. 
Like a bread, I believe that God wanted his son to be available to all mankind. And that is why we get a comparison of bread in this instance. For historically, up until today, bread it is that element of food that is easily associated with those who are poor, those who are low in society, those who are in need for it has been a commodity that is easily accessible for all. And therefore, as I say, I believe God's plan is to reach all mankind. And look now, his news was announced and to the shepherds. His news was not announced to King Herod. It was those men who were always looking after flocks that the message came to them. Those whom we forget in most of the time are those that receive the news of the birth of Christ, not King Herod. And when you look at his bed, it was just a manger. That's where he lay. In an animal feeding straw, in a lowly stable, in a place that I don't want to find myself in. We don't want to sit around there. We want to go in and come out. But that is where Christ was born from. So he came so low so that we may be lifted up. What an amazing kind of love. In this time of Christmas to remember that he came down. He lowered himself that we be uplifted. He was born in this place, in the house of bread, to satisfy our spiritual hunger. There's a hunger, physical hunger that we go through. But there is, again, this spiritual hunger that we experience as people, as John speaks about it in 6.35, and Jesus said unto them, I'm the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger, and he who believes in me shall never thirst. Bread, a good comparison to Jesus is to us. It is such a wonderful comparison. He satisfies, he gratifies, and gives us strength as bread does to those who eat it. Those who are hungry, when they eat their bread, for it is what they can be able to get, they get satisfied out of it. Christ came in our lives that when we receive him, we receive that gratification, that fullness that we needed. You know, as, as, as one day when Prophet Samuel was moving and uh, uh, bringing good news to kings to Saul, that Saul, God has appointed you to be king. He was, he was God's choice. But that there is something that Saul needed that will convince him that is God in this thing. It is not somebody's thing that says, Saul, you will be a king, but he believed because of the message that prophet Samuel brought to him. The Bible says he met three men, and in these three men, one had three loaves of bread. He told him these things that Saul will see that in the near future, so he can believe message that it comes from the Lord. What a beautiful picture it is, that of sufficiency, that God at work in a form of his triune, God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, that God is at work for his servants. And it is a typical way of sufficiency that God brought, our spiritual provision through Jesus Christ. Christ is all the soul of man needs for our spiritual satisfaction. And we, we wander, and we wander all over the places. Like people who don't have direction. If our lives are only hanging on temporary things, if our lives are hanging only over situations that are but temporary, 
for Jesus' birth in Bethlehem signifies how God is willing to restore us back to him in satisfying our deeper need that is of getting the love that surpasses all understanding and bringing us into a relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ. And Jesus was born in Bethlehem, which is the house of bread, so that we must choose him as savior for ourselves. What am I saying? That he came so that we may choose for ourselves. It's like eating a meal. It is only the person that eats that meal or that bread that will get satisfaction out of it. There's no way if I am not eating the meal that the next person eats, that I'll be satisfied. For I am not the one that consumes this. But Paul in 1 Corinthians 10, 17 says, Because there is one bread, we who are many are one body. For we are all partake of the one bread. He is the only bread that offers eternal life. And decisions of receiving him lies entirely upon all of us. There is no way I can take Christ or have or recommit myself or commit myself on behalf of somebody else. But it is me stepping forth and say, Lord, I receive you as the Lord and Savior. For that is the biggest goal that God brought Christ on earth was to reconcile us back unto him. It goes beyond being a church member, being a philanthropist, or being a poor person. Question is, have you made commitment in relating to Christ as your Savior? And that's a message that we should bring forth that says, I receive Christ in my life. John 1, 12, but as many as received him, to them gave the right to become children of God. To those who believe in his word, he gave them the right to be called children of God. But only those who believe in him. Making that decision of accepting Christ as the Lord and Savior. He spiritually comes in. Like when I eat bread, it satisfies my body. So when I receive Christ as the Lord and Savior of my life, it satisfies my spiritual being. And it's only when I make that decision. It is such an important decision that we need to make. I have seen Christ has been taken out of, out of the mass of his occasion. And it has become such a, a consumer moment for, for, for things to be sold. But we, it is not about doing that. It is not about profit. It is about our souls that we be saved. And those who are saved, this time, it is such an important time that we share this love that God has brought unto us through Christ Jesus. For he is our Savior. Christ was born in Bethlehem, the house of bread, so that he can come in and dine with us. He can come. He says in Revelations that I am standing at the door. I am knocking. If one opens his heart, I will come in and dine with him. That's what the Lord is waiting upon us. He's just waiting for a response that we bring forth in receiving him. As our Lord and Savior. And in conclusion, he fed the multitudes bread. He took bread and said, this is my body, eat from it. And after resurrection, he broke bread at a mouse. What does this has to do with us? Or what does this say to us? It symbolizes the continuous presence of God seeking us, the continuous presence of Emmanuel, 
God with us. He's aware of our needs, our fears and doubts. He is aware of that. If he can reveal himself and where he reveals himself, there's always breaking of bread for he is the bread of, of life. And Matthew 4 verse 4 says, But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from God. Jesus was born that we may live and live this life in fullness. He came to fill our deepest hunger, which is a need in our spirit. This kind of hunger or need cannot be, 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 be found in, at any retail shop. It is only when we come to the crown, on the cross of Christ, that we receive him. We receive him as the savior of our life. His birth means so much from us. And God put a plan properly and said he will be born in Bethlehem, house of bread, that we may relate it to him. So we need to make our mind and whom do we believe and follow. And let me say to you, Jesus is able as the year ends. Jesus is still on the throne. He still saves. He still speaks to us. He is the bread that God brought for us to feel our deepest need in our spirit. And may the Lord bless you. And let us pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you can speak through your word to us. Father, we thank you that we can relate to Christ. His birth, Lord, was not a, a lavish one. It's not one that will be in the front pages in our time. But we know that Christ is our center. And Father, I pray that as we celebrate this day with our families, with our friends and relatives, may we find in our dialogues, in our conversations, to lift up your name, Lord, that we remind each other of who you are in us. And Father, we thank you that more than 2,000 years ago, you had a plan already for us to save us from all iniquity, from all our sins, that we may be washed through the blood of Jesus. For we know, Lord, that he was born as a baby, but he reigned as a king. And thank you, Holy Spirit, that you can remain in us and remind us of his greatness and God's plan for us. For your love for us is unconditional. Come now, Lord, and fill us with your peace that we need. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.